Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters. I'm your host, Mitch. Glad to have you here. Here at the Commander's Quarters, we're all about Commander on a budget. Today, we have an episode of Commander's Two Cents. On episodes like these, I give you my own personal take on topics about the format in general and current news. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. And while you're at it, subscribe and review our podcast as well. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. So on a previous episode, we went over the most popular new commanders of 2019. But 2019 not only brought in some new exciting commanders, but it also brought in some new exciting cards for the 99. So today, let's go over the most played new cards from 2019. Now, a quick note on this list. For this list, I'm going to be using data from EDH Rec. With this list, I do realize that the cards that came out early in the year definitely have an advantage over the cards that released later. They definitely had more time to be put into decks, but regardless, it's still a fun exercise to look at where things are now. So with that out of the way, let's get into it. So let's start things off with number 10. The 10th most played new card from 2019 is Karn's Bastion. Currently it's $1.63 and he's playing over 7,000 decks. It's a very simple land that you can tap to add colorless or you can pay 4 and tap it to proliferate. When you proliferate, you choose any number of permanents and or players, then you give each another counter of each kind already there. Because it's a land that doesn't produce a specific color, it can technically fit in any deck. But obviously it's going to be put into decks that mainly focus on counters. That being said, there are plenty of different decks and counters out there that this can affect. And many decks out there can sacrifice a land slot for an effect like this. Karn's Bastion can fit right into a deck like a Patra Vizier of Poisons. This kind of deck deals with putting minus one minus one counters on creatures. Whenever you put one of those counters on a creature, you get a snake. So once you're set up by proliferating, you can make a ton of snakes. Another deck this can fit in is one of the many plus one plus one counters decks, such as Rolesk. There are actually multiple builds for Rolesk, and it can even proliferate as well. So another direction a player might take it is Super Friends, which is built around Planeswalkers. And of course, a deck like Attracts is another place that Karn's Bastion can fit in as well. Attracts already proliferates at your end step, so Karn's Bastion just gives you another way to proliferate each turn. There are plenty of different ways that you can build around Attraxis so that proliferating can come in huge. So again, Karn's Bastion can fit in many different kinds of decks. It can go into minus one counter builds, plus one counter builds, Planeswalker builds, or even infect builds too. With that kind of flexibility, it earned 10th place. But now let's move on to number 9. Coming in at 9th place is Generous Gift. Currently, Generous Gift is $1.28 and he's playing over 7,100 decks. It's an instant for 2 and a white, and it says destroy target permanent, its controller creates a 3 3 green elephant creature token. This is essentially a functional reprint of Beast Within, but in white. Beast Within is a very popular card, and this one is getting there as well. Being able to destroy any permanent in exchange for a 3 3 is a fantastic deal. In Commander, for the most part, a 3 3 is essentially useless, and powerful target removal like this can come in huge. This can essentially fit into any deck with white, but let's go over a few. A deck like Elsa the Infinite, you can even cast it off the top of your library for some extra value. But an even better place for this might be Gahiji, where you actually want to give your opponent's creatures. A 3-3 is not much, but when they're attacking someone else with a 5-3, that's going to be impactful. Even a 5-color deck like Kenrith can use this as well. That just shows you how powerful a removal spell like this one is. Even with all cards considered, Generous Gift is a fantastic piece of removal for any deck. And with all that said, let's move on to number 8. Coming in at 8th place is Narset's Reversal. Narset's Reversal costs $1.44 and sees play in just over 7,700 decks. It's an instant for Blue Blue and it says, Copy target instant or sorcery spell, then return it to its owner's hand. You may choose new targets for the copy. So this technically doesn't counter a spell, it just kind of delays it. But on top of that, you're getting a copy of it yourself. Now, delaying a spell can be just as effective as countering one in certain situations, because essentially that person might have just wasted all their mana on that spell and can't cast anything else that turn. And then for just two mana, you're essentially getting a huge discount on that spell. And this card is actually very flexible because you can cast it targeting one of your own instants or sorceries too. You're basically getting a copy of it and getting the original back to your hand. This is a fantastic option for many decks. But let's just tackle a few to consider. Kaikar loves non-creature spells because when you cast one, you get a spirit. And then Nimbus is going to draw your card and ping something when you cast it. And then Cast actually lets you cast it again from your graveyard. Now again, although Narset's Reversal doesn't technically counter a spell, it is somewhat delaying it and it does give you a lot of value from it too. The amount of value really depends on the spell, but if you're getting something like an extra turn spell for just 2 mana, that's a huge effect. But now it's time for us to move on to number 7. And the 7th most played new card from 2019 is Prismatic Vista. Currently it's a whopping $25.26 and he's playing over 8,000 decks. It's a land that you can tap and pay 1 life and sacrifice it to search your library for a basic land card and put on some battlefield and shuffle your library. It's pretty incredible that even at $25, it's already seeing a ton of play. Fixing your mana is extremely important in Commander, and having lands that can do that for you is huge. This card is basically a better Evolving Wilds or Terramorphic Expanse. You do have to pay one life, but that land does come into play untapped. And one life is a very small price to pay for that effect, especially in Commander. If you can afford it, this card can pretty much fit into any deck with multiple colors. But let's go over some decks where this can really shine. 
One of those is Corvold, which wants to sacrifice things because when you do, you draw a card. Another one is going to be Omnath, Locus of Rage, which is going to give you a 5-5 elemental every single time a land comes into play. And finally, a 5-color deck like Golos Tyrus Pogrom can be a great place for it as well. The more ways to fix your mana in those kinds of decks, the better. Again, Prismatic Vista can technically go in any deck. There are some monocolor decks that might want it, but for the most part, it's going to be in multicolor decks. And unless it's reprinted in the near future, I don't see that price going down anytime soon. And now it's time for us to move on to number 6. And the 6th most played new card from 2019 is Narset Parter of Veils. She currently costs $2.24 and is currently seeing playing over 8,230 decks. She's a Planeswalker that starts off at 5 loyalty and costs 1 blue blue. She has each opponent can't draw more than one card each turn. She also has minus two. Look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal a non-creature or non-land card from among them and put it into your hand and put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Now that minus two is nice, but the main reason that people play Narset is because of her static effect. Making it so that opponents can't draw more than one card each turn is huge. It's also very abusable and can really shut your opponents down. For example, in a Locust God deck, you're going to be running a lot of wheels. So normally when you wheel, each player discards their hand and draws seven cards. With this in play, you still get to draw seven cards, but each of your opponents only get to draw one. So since you made them discard their entire hand for nothing, a control style deck that can protect her like Pramacon can definitely use this as well. In a Super Friends deck like Sisse Weather like Captain can be a great place for it too. You can even use Sisse's ability to tutor her out and put her right into play. This is a very impressive effect that can slow down your opponents or even stop them. So there are a lot of reasons why it came in 6th place. But now it's time for us to move on to number 5. Coming in at 5th place is Bolas's Citadel. Currently it's $1.58 and she's playing 8,310 decks. It's a legendary artifact for 3 black black black. It says you may look at the top card of your library anytime. You may play the top card of your library. If you cast a spell this way, pay life equal to its converted mana cost rather than pay its mana cost. And you can tap it and sacrifice 10 non-land permanents and each opponent loses 10 life. So this not only gives you access to the top card of your library, but it lets you cheat on its mana cost. Now you will have to pay life for that, but again in Commander you've got a lot of life to work with. And if you're in a life gain deck, you can easily storm off and win with this. This is a very powerful card that can even act as a finisher by sacrificing those 10 permanents for 10 life. Let's tackle some decks where this might fit into though. A deck like Carrick's Son of Yawgmoth already wants to cheat on mana cost at the cost of life. Vils is going to draw you a ton of cards whenever you're losing that life. And then a deck like Aloro just has a lot of life to play with. Again, giving you access to the top card of your library is very powerful. And allowing you to cast cards for life instead of mana really puts us over the top. But now it's time for us to move on to number 4. And the 4th most played new card from 2019 is Rhythm of the Wild. Right now it costs $1.29 since he's playing nearly 8,500 decks. It's an enchantment for one red green and says creature spells you control can't be countered and non-token creatures you control have riot. So they enter the battlefield with your choice of a plus plus one counter or haste. So this is an enchantment with a pretty low mana cost that does a lot of work for you. First off, it protects your creature spells from being countered. That already can throw a big wrench in a lot of control strategies. But on top of that, it gives you the choice of either pumping a creature when it comes into play or giving it haste. Most of the time, if you're running an aggressive deck, you're probably going to choose haste. This can help you hit for a lot out of nowhere. If you don't have the chance to swing, you can just pump that creature instead. Or if you're running a plus plus one counters build, this can come in huge as well. A deck that's built around counters like Rum Gully the Generous can be a good place for it. Another that wants to hit players quickly like Marisi Brick of the Coil can be a good place for it as well. And then a deck with some heavy hitters like the Ur Dragon can use it too. Again, protecting your spells when you cast them and making them more effective when they come down is huge. But now we're going to move on to number 3. And the third most played new card from 2019 is Arcane Signet. It's already nearly $10 and sees playing over 9,000 decks. It's a very simple card, it's an artifact that costs 2 and it has tapped to add 1 mana of any color in your commander's color identity. So this is a very efficient mana rock that helps you ramp and fix your mana. I mentioned this before, but when it comes to ramping, I usually want to get half the amount of mana back that I put into something. So mana rocks that cost 2 and tap for 1 are right on curve for me. And Arcane Signet actually stands by the rest because it always can tap for one of our colors. Others usually have downsides or some kind of a stipulation. Because Arcane Signet doesn't have those, it can pretty much fit into any deck. As a budget player though, I might never be able to use this one. Because demand for it will always be high, it's going to have to take a lot of supply to get that price down. But let's just quickly go over some decks for it. Dryro wants essentially any kind of efficient mana rock so it fits right in. Then Alayla is going to make you a fairy when you cast it. A 5 color deck like Reaper King can also be a great place for it as well. Although this card can pretty much fit into any deck, I do prefer Land Ramp over Mana Rocks. Regardless, at its current price, I don't have the option of using it anyways. But now it's time for us to move on to number 2. And coming in at second place is Guardian Project. Currently it's nearly $3 and sees playing over 9,500 decks. It's an enchantment for 3 and a green and it says whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, if it doesn't have the same name as another creature you control or a creature card in your graveyard, draw a card. So where a good portion of that text might be relevant in other formats, it's pretty irrelevant in Commander. So for most decks, this basically reads whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. Drawing cards is crucial in Commander and this is an easy way to do it for creature-based strategies. If you get this down early, it can provide you a ton of value throughout the game. And if you've got some blink effects, you can abuse this even further. Obviously, it's going to fit in a lot of decks that have green. Some examples are going to be Yark, Kadena, and Tulane. Yark's going to double that trigger up so you get to draw two cards instead of one. And the Kadena is also going to draw you that additional card too. And then Tulane decks are going to get to draw two and put a land into play. 
Even for decks that can't abuse that effect, it can still be a fantastic draw engine for them. As long as drawing cards is important in Commander, it's going to be a popular card. But now it's time for us to move on to number 1. And the most played new card from 2019 by far was Smothering Tithe. Currently it's over $8 and sees playing over 22,000 decks. It's an enchantment for 3 and a white and it says whenever an opponent draws a card, that player may pay 2. If the player doesn't, you create a colorless treasure artifact token with tap, sacrifice this artifact, add 1 mana of any color. This card is disgustingly good in Commander. Like I just mentioned, drawing cards is extremely important in Commander. Because of that, you can end up with a huge pile of treasures very quickly. A tax of 2 mana for each card drawn is a huge amount. And because of that, many players are going to opt to not pay that. A color like white really struggles with ramp. So obviously this fits into pretty much any mono white deck. But because the amount of value this can provide you is undeniable, it can fit into pretty much any deck, including decks that have green. It's really hard to deny how quickly this can ramp you. So let's just tackle a few decks where this can be seen. A borrow stack like Fire Song and Sunspeaker is a great place for it. Even a borrow stack that doesn't necessarily need ramp like Feather the Redeem can use it as well. That deck is going to be very low to the ground, focusing on casting some low-cost spells, but Smothering Tithe can let you cast even more of them each turn. You can also put in a deck that really takes advantage of having opponents draw cards like Kaneos and Tiro. It's a very powerful effect and is considered by many to be the white version of Ristic Study. There are definitely plenty of reasons that it finished in first place this year. But now it's my turn here from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on this list are. Was there a card that wasn't on here that you thought would be? And make sure you're following us on social media for more updates and sneak peeks on future episodes. Again, a huge thank you to my patrons who helped make this show possible. I truly couldn't do any of this without your support. If you want to support this channel directly, consider becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, including being able to vote on future commanders for deck tags. There are even tiers where you get your own personalized deck tech dedicated to you. You can check out all the Patreon tiers and rewards at patreon.com slash commanders quarters. If you haven't already, make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel. Here at the Commander's Quarters, we're all about budget commander. So while you're at it, go ahead and check out some of our other types of episodes. And with that, I'm out of here. Thanks again and have a good one.